Good morning. Once again, this is Breakfast with the Bishop. Bishop Gary coming to you. This time we're from Hild in Hildebrand, North Carolina, at Reflections of Life Church. Reflections of Christ Church, I'm sorry. Pastor Mitchell and his beautiful wife. Tremendous feast of Passover going on here right now, and we're part of it. And I am so thrilled to be here, uh, just to be part of what God's doing in America. Go out and see these guys at Reflections of Christ Church. Tremendous group of young people, a tremendous building, just a tremendous pastor and his wife. You'll be blessed. You'll be blessed as I am. I want to get right to the word today. A few shows back, before we started this tour, I believe, uh, it may have been the first Sunday in March or the last of February, or the second or the last of February. We do so many, I lose track. But back there, I talked about Abraham staggering not at the promise. He hoped against hope. I want to put some more to that hope today. Uh, Romans eight and uh, Romans five and three for three. <laughs> tang tangled up here. Got my tongue tangled over my eye tooth and can't see how to say it. Romans five, three through five. I want to read that to you. And hope makes not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. That's verse five. Now I want to go back and read verse three and four. And then five again. I just want you to get these things because they're important. Uh, not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience and patience experience and experience hope. And that's what I want to get to. And hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. And then Romans 8, 25, But if we hope for what we see not, then do we, with patience, wait for it. There's a lot to be said about hope, but hope and patience seem to go together. We live in an age, in a generation, in a time in God where there's not a lot of patience and there really isn't a lot of hope. This generation has to see it, has to experience it, and it's all about them. They don't want to wait for the promises of God. And I just want to impart to us today, uh, you that are listening, my hope is not in the rapture of the church. My hope is not in the grave dying and going to heaven. My hope is not in heaven. My hope is not in the church. My hope is not in my salvation. Boy, that's terrible, isn't it? But my hope is in a man. His name is Jesus Christ. My hope is in him. My faith is in him. My life is in him. And I'm hoping against all hope that he's going to minister and manifest some things in my life. He's going to use me to minister some things for you guys, to help you, to help others. And everyone I come in contact with, that I can be more like him. I'm hoping for a healing in my body as it gets older here I'll soon be 70 and uh, I still feel like in my mind I'm 20 25 but my body tells me different but I'm hoping that as as we said in a few shows back with Abraham who was restored I'm hoping against hope for God's rest restitution uh resurrection yes uh I want you to develop a hope develop a hope in Christ your your, your hope can't be in uh, some man or some gimmick or some fad. Uh, there's there's good things out there. There's there's vitamins and everything you can do. But our hope, a real hope, has to be centered in something eternal. And Jesus Christ, if you can get that, He is our hope. He is the one. I want to read Romans 15 in uh, verses 4, 5, and 13. Quite a few scriptures, but I want to throw them in, and then I'll, I'll try to close. For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's why I'm reading them. I want these scriptures to comfort you more than any words that I could say. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus. That's what we got to do. I share with you your burdens, your pains, and I'm hoping with you that God is able to deliver you, as the scripture says, 
and deliver me out of all of those problems. And then, verse 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy. Get that, get that as we close. Fill you with all joy, all peace. Oh, I like that. In believing that you may abound in hope, have a lot of it, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's take that promise of God. Let's take the word of God and let's abound in joy and peace and hope. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 8 also says we're saved by hope and hope makes not ashamed. I want to be a minister of hope to you today. All of you out there that are hoping something would come to pass. I want to say a closing prayer for you. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we place our hopes, our cares in you, that you would work patience in our life and comfort in our life, and you would bring forth joy, and you'd bring forth peace, and you'd bring forth a fresh love for you and for our uh, fellow, fellow Americans and fellow humanity. Lord, let these things that people are asking for, praying for, fasting for, and crying for, hoping for, believing for, let them begin to come to pass in our lives. We're the sheep of your pasture, Lord, and you're the shepherd. And we love you. We bless you today, Lord. We just praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Follow the rest of the tour on Facebook. We'll wind up being in Clayton, Georgia with Pastor Manus. Bless you all till next week. Love you. Bye-bye.